Welcome back to another episode of the Ben and Melanie Show. Uh, this is your host, Ben. I'm here with uh, Melanie. Hey there. Uh, hi, Melanie. Um, uh, we have a lot to talk about today, but actually I wanted to talk about uh, today. Today is actually our 10th uh, uh, episode, uh, yay. which is, uh, yay, yeah, I, I mean, we're still, uh, yeah, going. I, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I didn't actually, when I started this thing, I didn't know I'd actually be going this long. <laughs> so I'm actually really happy, uh, uh, yeah, that we're just, uh, we're keeping making it. I, I, thanks a lot to everybody who is listening, and I really, really appreciate that. So, um, I, yeah, and, and everybody who has uh, uh, commented and, uh, uh, you know, all your feedback and everything like that. So, um, yeah, this is a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Um, I guess that being said, I could talk about the first uh, article I have read here. This is a Michigan-related uh, issue. Um, uh, I read an article in the New York Times. Um, it's actually it's from December 29th, so it's like a month old now. But, um The name of the article is Ungerrymandered Michigan Maps Independently Drawn Set Up a Fair Fight. A citizen ballot initiative took redistricting out of the hands of partisan legislatures. The result, the competitive... Uh, competitive political districts and an example of how to push back against hyperpartisanship. And I still think this is like the first best, only bestest, greatest hope that democracy has right now is getting rid of gerrymandering. I totally agree. And uh, yeah, I, I just am so, 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 so happy about that. Um, okay, I'm going to read a little bit more here. Uh the uh, article is by Nick uh, Cora Santi, San- Santi. Um, and like I said, it was published on December 29, 2021. Uh, one of the country's most gerrymandered political maps has suddenly been replaced by one of the fairest. A decade after Michigan Republicans gave themselves a seemingly impregnable uh, majorities in the state legislature by drawing districts that heavily favored their party, a newly created independent commission approved maps late Tuesday that created districts so competitive that Democrats have a fighting chance of recapturing the state Senate for the first time since 1984. Uh, the work of the new commission, which includes Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, was established through a citizen ballot initiative, uh, stands in sharp contrast to the type of hyperpartisan extreme gerrymandering that has swept much of the country, exacerbating political polarization, and it may highlight a potential path to undoing such gerrymandering. With lawmakers excluded from the map-making process, Michigan's new districts will much uh, more closely reflect the overall partisan makeup of the hotly contested battleground state. Uh, yeah, so I'm just uh, just uh, thinking that that's great. Um, I think that's wonderful, but did you did I miss it? Did you say uh, who was on that commission to who it? Uh, they're independent. Like they had a multiple independents, Republicans, and Democrats. Okay. So I, I can't remember the exact numbers. Why? What do you mean? I was just wondering if they were like politicians or if they were no business. That's people actually or... a big part of it. Actually, when you uh, wanted to like uh, register to become to be get on that commission, you had to say your political affiliation. Like they wanted two Republicans. I think they wanted a couple. I, I don't remember the exact numbers actually. But I know they wanted uh, Republicans, they wanted Democrats, and they wanted Independents, and then like they had to have a consensus before they could actually get any maps passed. So, so this is a proof yeah. that they can, that Republicans and Independents and Democrats can come together on something. So yes. yay! It is uh, true. Later in the article, they are talking about it more. Um, there are multiple, I mean, a couple lawsuits I think pending. Um, I think the Republicans. Uh, I think they've already tried suing multiple times, and they're trying to sue again. It sounds like from what their legal, the New York Times person, they're talking to somebody here. Uh, from what they're saying, that the uh, oh Michael Lee here, a senior counsel who focuses on redistricting at the Brennan Center for Justice, um, yeah, he uh, was basically saying that uh, like the Republicans probably don't have a good chance at overturning it at all. It's an amendment to the state's constitution. Um, then in Detroit, uh, I know like uh, African Americans have sued, uh, saying that they're underrepresented, underrepresented, um, which may be true in, for this map. And I guess, but what also he was saying like that, yeah, they might change a few of the lines around Detroit because of that, but. Overall, I mean, they're they're stuck with this map now, and um, 
And they're already running, like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mulinar, the representative for currently uh, mid-Michigan, including Midland, is definitely running for his seat. Um, uh, for, unfortunately, in the article, too, they were talking about this bit, too. Unfortunately, our sort of area kind of got stuck with the leftovers. So, uh, uh, like, the mid-Michigan area is kind of in a weird, is, is, is pretty partisan still. Uh, but that's uh, that's normal, I think. Um, but actually, John Moulinart does not actually live in this area. He lives in Midland. So I actually think that he shouldn't be running for this seat. I think it'd be nicer to have somebody from this area actually running. You know, and, and when I say this area, quote unquote, I mean a very, very large swath of the middle of the state, really, from literally like Barry County and Hastings all the way up to like freaking Cadillac. And then like, it like kind of like is like a giant freaking uh, T almost, but it's like it's like fat, it's like a giant T-bone steak. Because uh, it like, gets this narrow at the bottom, gets fat at the top, but um, uh, uh, <laughs> nah. so that's but it's a huge area. It's plus thirty points on the Republican side. There's no way a Democrat uh, will ever win here. Um, however, places like Grand Rapids now it's very competitive. The Tri City area, I think, you know, Saginaw, Midland, Bay City, that whole area, that's very competitive now. Like that, that uh, um, it, there's lots of areas now that are up for grabs. So. Um, it's definitely going to change uh, the nature of elections in our state, I think, going, f- going forward. Um, they're at, I, I think this benefits Republicans just as much as it benefits Democrats in many ways, too, because there's tons of states, actually, where Republicans don't have a snowball chance in hell at winning. You know, like in California, there are a lot of Republicans. California is a huge freaking state, you know, population-wise and size-wise, and there's a, there's a shit ton of Republicans there, and they are completely underrepresented. Uh, underrepresented, I'm sure, you know. Uh, so, I mean, this th- they could pass something like this in a lot of other states, blue states included. Yeah, give, it a, might... give a fair shake to the voters to be able to uh, yeah. have yeah. a representative that re- represents oh them. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I know. It just seems yeah. so simple, and I don't know why they haven't done it. Why do we need ago. to stack it one way or the other? It should just be a fair fight. That's what I think. That's yeah. what I think. More commissions need to happen like this. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's not going to change, obviously – you know, places like 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 Mid Michigan are going to stay Republican. It's not; they're not going to be. That's not going to change. You know, it's, it's still, this could represent the makeup of the area. You know, um, but I think it'd just be so much better in many cases. So, um, yeah, and, and like in this state, the state's a, like a fifty fifty state. This is a purple state, and you would yep. never know it. The Republicans have just had control, like literally all of our lives. It feels like <laughs> just about yep. Yep. if you're forty. You know, like just pretty much, like seem, it seemingly, and it's just, it's you would never know. It's it's a purple state. You would think it was just completely red. You yep. know. Um, yep. Anyway, trying to, I'm trying to reach out. I'm, try, I'm kind of maybe that's a hassle thing to say too, because I'm trying to reach out to Republicans a little bit here on this too. I think it would benefit both sides. I really do. I don't think it would just benefit Democrats at all. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we could. Uh, Keep, I'm trying to think of what was next on the agenda today. Um, did you have anything, any articles uh, you want to talk about next? Um, yeah. Well, I wanted to go back to something that happened. What year was it that this happened? I can't remember. Uh, hmm. Just a second. got to look it up here. Hold okay. on. Do, do, do. So back in October, there was an incident that landed all over the Internet. Um, about a math teacher named Candace Reed in California who did an offensive uh, dance wearing a Native American headdress in her classroom for years where she chanted Soka Toa, a mnemonic used to remember trig functions. She has now been terminated. Uh, there were many calls, emails, letters to the school district to fire her. Um, I know that a lot of Native American people, Indian people in the, in the communities uh, were outraged. And I understand this because I, I myself have fought against mascots. But I think that I, didn't, I would rather her have not been terminated. I would rather her have been suspended and forced to go to the reservation that's closest to her and learn a thing or two and have some diversity training. That would be good because firing her just lets her go off and get another job somewhere else where she can do the same thing. 
So I would rather have her educated on why that was bad, uh, as far as um, my opinion goes. But I know that many in uh, Native America would rather have had her terminated. Uh, do you have any thoughts? You, uh, well, no, I just want to make sure uh, you you had a good source for that, right? As far as like she actually got fired. <laughs> oh, shit. oh no! <laughs> my microphone fell. Hold on. Oh no! Oh no! Well, okay. Yes, I did. Okay. I just didn't know. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just something somebody's banding about on Facebook or whatever. Right. No, you it's know, like uh, that's, that's uh I, I actually a- agree with you though. As far as like I think fire her has to be I mean, maybe I don't know though. Maybe she just stood up to the school board and just said, Screw you, I'm doubling down. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, and I have no might, idea. They might have left her with no option. Right. But uh, I'm just, I'm surprised that they fired her over that, actually. I know it gave a lot of negative publicity to that school district. Oh, yeah. Whatever. But, like, geez, you know, like, that, that's yeah. not giving her a chance to learn mm-hmm. anything. And, I would yeah. rather her learn something because when you when you fire people, this kind of goes into Bill Maher a little bit because, well, let me go back here first. That article um, that states that she was fired is on the Riverside City College Viewpoints page for February 5th of this year. So that was published this year. Today. <laughs> Actually. Okay. Um, that's, that's saying that she did Brand indeed new. get fired. Yeah. So, um, but I think this goes to like Bill Maher. We watch Bill Maher sometimes and we kind of are like, he does this big thing about cancel culture all the time and how you're not allowed to make a mistake when you're younger and then you get to be like 30 or something and that mistake comes back to haunt you. I think that this, I think that if I just go from my gut and I'm, I'm emotional and I'm angry and yeah, fire her. But when I stop and think about it, that doesn't help anybody because now you've made a person that first of all was mocking a, a culture and secondly doesn't know anything and now they hate them because they were fired from their job they did not learn a thing when you fire them uh over this kind of stuff they need to be educated i mean when we went after the mascot issue we educated the community on why it was bad why is it bad we'll show you we brought the tribe in we brought historical documents in to show why that was a an offensive term so I think the same thing should go for these kind of situations. They should definitely be uh, educated about why. I think the internet's just making people famous now, and that's that's a big big change um, to, compared to the way things used to be. You know, I mean, I'm sure she could have done this 20 years ago easily and never had any consequences for it. And I'm sure she's probably done it for the several years of yeah. her career on a regular basis. And that's you know. Uh, you know that's her choice obviously it's free country and it's it's what about annoying as a student obviously and racist you know but i mean and all you can do though in the past is just complain about it but now their current technology everything is recorded and more than just complaining is done it just gets posted for the world you know so it's like i guess people just need to be more aware of that um man i anyway i think that was a it was a it was a shitty thing what she did but firing her, I feel like this, this. God, man, that just seems like over, over the top. Actually, it, it, it reminds me that. Well, this isn't nearly as bad. Um, 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 uh, but uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg situation that just yeah. happened this week, where she yep. basically uh, on the View on live TV basically said the Holocaust was not about race, which there just is so much wrong with that. Um, I don't even know if I want to get into that, but that's, I kind of, yeah, that's, anyway, oh, well, she was just suspended though for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and she apologized, you know, it's not like she she had the defamation league on and learned why that was wrong. Yep. That was important. She did not double down. Um, she did all the right things. Uh, she said, Oh, I made a mistake there. Uh, the Germans viewed Jews as a different race. Mm -hmm. So everything about that. But a saying that was wrong, really. Um, I I think that it just uh, goes to show, like maybe the definition of race in our country, from her perspective, it might be different than what she 
might be different than what it would be, especially like to somebody maybe in Europe, especially like 70, 80 years ago. Uh, I have to interject uh, here because yeah. I think part of it is that in the United States, we have a dichotomous relationship with race. So you're either white or you're black. And yeah. so when she's seeing the word race, she's connotating that yep. with people of color yep. and does not right. associate Jewish people that's, with people of color, even though they that's are. A, that's a, her definition of race was just ser- seriously like black and white. Right. Yeah. You're either right. black or white and that's it. Yeah, like I, t- I get in, in her mind. That's what she was thinking anyway, mm-hmm. at the time, and like, yep. she's like, "What do you mean race? Like races? They're they're all white people, yep. you know." Like, yep. But like, that's not that's not yeah, just not obviously the case. at all how the world is. Um, you know, like race is a, uh, I mean, according to science anyway, it's not really like a biological thing. It's it's more of a cultural construct construct. According to anthropologists, too, it's more of a cultural construct that changes over time, actually. And according to so, country. Because yeah, if you're in right. Britain, totally different thing. Yeah. Race means a totally different thing in Brazil. I mean, it depends on the country you're living with. And the time period. And the time period okay. and the history it's, of that place. Yeah. So, like, yep. it, 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 could, it can mean different things for different people depending on the time and place. But And as a yeah. minority group, I mean, minority groups need to acknowledge the pain that other groups have had over earth and throughout history and not do a compare notes thing where you cannot compare pain pain is pain and all of it is horrific that's all i have to say about that the holocaust was horrific it should have never happened i hope that more people learn about it because we just heard uh, statistics this morning on the pbs news hour we were watching and they were saying like do you remember the statistic it was very low i like that people that understood or knew anything oh, yeah. about they, the there Holocaust. There was a study that was done a couple of years ago, apparently, and they actually asked people, I want to say in between like 20 and, 30, 20 and 40 or something like that, just younger people in general, I guess I should say, uh, if what they if they thought the Holocaust was real, like 23% or so, this is on PBS NewsHour if you want to look it up anyway, that's, uh, but this they, they said like, uh, like 23%, 23 point some percent of people just thought it might, might have been not real or a myth or 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 not even know anything about it which is actually completely disturbing that scares me but i think it might be like they're not really like they really jammed it in our heads when we were in school definitely um but i i'm not sure if they're teaching it quite to that extent anymore and it could be just that generation the older generation that had to go through it obviously is dying out and i mean there's very probably very few of them left i would think at this point Uh, hardly any um so i i think that that might have a lot to do with it too but yeah yeah so eventually i mean that's probably going to be a thing of a of the past that people are going to have to de- try to debate constantly to try to figure out whether it really happened or not which um it has been upheld in a court of law that it really did happen um in the 1980s in england <laughs> and they made a documentary about it anyway right it's, i don't know did you ever yeah, anyway, but... Um, I personally have been down to Dearborn, and I went through the uh, the Holocaust Museum down there, and let me tell you, when you go through there, they have the original documents, they have video, they have newspapers, they have everything, everything documented, and it is something that I cannot believe somebody would not believe that that happened. It isn't like, it's It's almost like people are trying to turn it into like, well, we never really went to a moon, went, went to the moon. It was on a sound stage. No, it was not. The Holocaust was real. The, the genocide of Native Americans is real. And the horrifying, horrifying slave trade happened. And also this country was, was founded on all these things. It was uh, a colony colonizing land that was held by native people um so and then the (laughs) like our capital was built by african-american slaves let's be honest here uh we need to recognize our own history why so we don't repeat it and that brings me to another thing i wanted to talk about Uh, really quick before we move on are are you you, sorry i hate to interrupt you i was just looking up uh anybody who hasn't seen denial that's a really good movie it's from 2016. It's all about. Uh, I think it's it's great. It, uh, it, it's all about this court case in the 1980s. Um, it, it has Rachel Weisz in it and Tom Wilkinson. Um, it's it's basically they they had a Holocaust denier 
um, who actually was trying to prove in court, and actually it, it looked, at least in the movie, I, I remember this movie, they, they, they made a documentary about it, it looks like too, back in the day, but uh, like in 2000, the Holocaust on trial or something, I don't know. But um, they they look like they it looked like he was going to win possibly, and uh, I mean they must maybe they created drama for the movie, but yeah, it's it's actually was proven in court that it actually happened. Just to be you know, anyway, Claire. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but hopefully this doesn't. I mean, obviously it's just going to continue to be a thing, you know, but. I wanted to move into another subject, which we've touched on before in other episodes, which is book banning. So in the last year, book banning has went up. I speaking mean, people, about Nazis. Yeah, p- yeah. Speaking of Nazis, okay. Uh, speaking about Nazis. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um. <laughs> so it's been in, even in the local paper, the Greenville Public Schools, uh, They their school board had to deal with this. Uh, uh, groups coming up with books that they think should be banned for various reasons. Now in the last... What was it in the last week? Well, like the mouse. Uh, well, yeah, I think that the discussion was well, actually we were talking about Whoopi Goldberg earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that in, the, in that discussion, they were talking about mouse. That's how it even the Holocaust even came up at all. Yep. Um, and then mouse is a graphic novel about the Holocaust. If you have not seen a TV recently. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, they definitely ban that. It, it's school districts, and school districts are allowed to ban things. Uh, they're not trying to ban. Obviously, they can't just like ban a book, you know, like all in like a state or something. But they can definitely ban it out of a school library, you know. And that's definitely that's what they did. Um, and now, uh, this last week, a pastor in was it Tennessee? I think there was yeah. also one in Texas. Uh, Tennessee actually is where this uh, did a sermon uh, and started a bonfire. So they uh, started yeah, he burning burned books. a bunch of uh, books, including uh, Harry Potter and Twilight. Um, the video and, even showed him burning uh, stuff from Disney. They were burning a bunch of ridiculous things. Like they were burning like you know backpacks and just a bunch of junk, really. Um, obviously I think it was done for the spectacle after watching the video, uh, which is, you can easily just Google the video of the book burning. But also I don't think that these people realize that it's a, a 2022 and I'm not sure the pastor does, but I think doing something like that this day and age is going to possibly make you infamous or famous. I mean, I guess, I mean, they're, they're looking for fame or maybe they're looking for infamy. I'm not really sure. Um, but I mean, the, a lot of the, uh, there was a surprisingly large crowd that showed up to burn their, you know, what they thought were witchcraft items or something, uh, devil items. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. I, I remember back when Harry Potter book came out, I remember churches burning that book before, too, yeah. but what is different about it this time is we're in a divisive time in our country where we're all really super worried about our democracy and afraid that it's going to turn into a fascist state mm-hmm. and doing something like that is uh, inflammatory. Oh, yeah. I've seen, I already saw the meme uh, posted to Facebook already. Like, there's a meme. Um, if this was a video of podcast, we could show it to you, but we can't. Um, <laughs> but there's a meme already floating around on the internet that's like showing the the this you know this congregation burning their books in in Tennessee, and they just compared it immediately to Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, like right below that, they showed 1930s in in Germany. You know, there's massive book fires, book burnings happening. Um, and the difference yeah. between 1933 and today is that when the German uh, the Nazi groups, I shouldn't say Germans, the Nazi groups uh, did the book burnings over there. They literally could remove ideas from society oh, yeah, if yeah, they yeah. burned all the books. They could actually destroy them. Yeah. Today, that is not possible. There's no way to remove all of a book from anywhere. Right. You got it's e-books. everywhere. It's all online. People yeah, have them so, on their computers yeah. as PDF. There's no way. It's purely symbolism It's now. symbolism now. Yeah. But the symbolism is dangerous. The That's idea true. of censoring thought is dangerous. Um, I just I think there's no way, no way they could possibly make anything more popular mm-hmm. than by burning it. I think we talked about this, uh, when, right? Yeah, it's been sorry, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done a podcast. Now, we were sick. We yeah, <laughs> we're, this wasn't even us. I, I wouldn't even let us being sick hold us back as much, but mostly the kids were sick. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so, sorry, we try to get it out weekly if we can, but obviously there's extenuating circumstances 
Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I, I really think that that was symbolism. I really think that like that the pastor is almost trying to just become more famous, get more mm-hmm. donations, get yep. more crazy people, yep. giving him money, um, whatever he can do. You right. know, but uh. it's disappointing to me though, and it really, really bothers me because. I've seen uh, groups try to do the censorship thing before. Like, I don't really like Nazi propaganda, but I'm not going to say it can't exist. No. Yeah, they have uh, 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 the, the ability to first, have the first, the first amendment, amendment right? right yeah, in to, our country, and yeah. that's okay. And you know how I deal with it? I don't read it. So if you don't want your kids to read something, don't give them the book. You can say no. If you don't want them on the internet, that's your business. But you can't tell me what I can do with my kid. Thank you. Yeah, that actually is kind of bullshit. Yeah. And that's what's happening, it seems like, in Greenville a little bit. Like, they're trying to tell you, some people are trying to tell the school board in Greenville what your kid can and can't read at school, Mm -hmm. which is bullshit, actually. But I'm really, really disappointed, actually. Me too this i'm not i'm actually not disappointed in our local community as a whole but i'm i'm disappointed in the individuals that are that are that are eating up this crap to try mm-hmm. to ban this stuff yeah. I, don't, I don't get it well i mean i get it I, I do think that that billionaires are funding i think they want people to be uneducated i really so think they so can make too. good little workers yeah and not not uh you not can't question something not, if you're not yeah, educated enough to do if it you've never read a book you're not going to be able to unionize very well I mean, that's, you're not going to know anything about unions. You know, this right? stuff so. happened a long time ago. You know, the peasants couldn't read. Only the the upper echelon could read back in the day. And they were just did whatever they were told, too. I hope I think people think about this. To, I think it was a lot easier to put down, well, that changed in France. So, and this, hey, is, France. this is this is a different situation, <laughs> too. I was going to say, a lot of people could read in France, too. That probably helped. But uh, um, I think that, like, this is a very different situation. People aren't peasants. They can read. Um, you can't – the more they try to get people to not read, the more people will. It's almost will have – I almost feel like it's going to just backfire constantly. Um, if the elite people like Jeff Bezos just want, need people to be just good little workers, eventually, I mean, they're going to start burning Amazon factories down, you know. <laughs> like, it's not going to – It's not, not, not that I'm suggesting to do that or anything. Not but, at all. But, but <laughs> – <laughs> just, you know, not at all. You don't have to defend me. <laughs> but anyway, I just say like, uh, now that I'm not, not think, I don't think that anybody really would want to do that. But um, that's what happens, man. Like people will, uh, I mean, they'll they'll come up the works. They'll start. Uh, they'll they'll shut down factories. They'll do all kinds of stuff. So you know, like we gotta we gotta you know, pay if, them good so they won't do that. Actually, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. But I also think that the more the schools get dumbed down and history isn't allowed to be taught and we're teaching two stupid tests that don't mean anything. We need to uh, think about that for a minute in our schools because if you don't know something, you can't do something. So people would shut down places like that because they are educated and not everyone wants to read. Some people would rather play a video game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but video games are fine. and I think you can learn a lot from video games too. So, I mean, like... I mean, I think if you lived in a police state um, like China, you know, for example, which I'm I'm trying to boycott the Olympics if possible because I don't agree with the Olympics even taking place in China, which China is committing genocide. China have, has basically its own Holocaust going on right now yep. with the Uyghurs. With the Uyghurs, With the Uyghur yeah. Muslims out on their, um, I guess it would be their, their uh, uh, western uh, uh, areas. Um, they're basically putting them all into, quote, unquote, re-education camps. By yep. the millions, yep, and and those are essentially like concentration camps. It's awful, and I don't think that I can't believe the Olympic Committee actually allowed this to. This shouldn't even be happening. I just totally disagree with it anyway. Um, but whatever. Anyway, um, yeah. So like China will try to ban video games. They do ban video games. They don't want people any playing or watching movies or playing video games of any sub, quote, quote unquote subversive. You know, or and, free access. They don't allow yeah. free access to the internet. No, there no, they. Well, they don't. I mean, you have to. Ha- you can get your hands on stuff and get your hands on movies and get get around stuff. You know, using uh, VPNs and stuff. But they, but you're taking a chance. You're violating the law. Yep. You don't want to go to a quote unquote re-education camp. Like we shouldn't forget that that's that's what China is. I think. Yeah. And, um. As I, I, you know, as much as I agree 
I, I agree with some of the tenets of communism, but I don't agree with authoritarianism and that China is authoritarianism. Like, and that's, they, that's bogus, you know, so. I would go to the fact of, <laughs> you know, like a lot of people are Christians in this country and believe that, A, you're supposed to help your neighbor. Well, that is what we're talking about here. We should be helping our neighbors. We should have free education and stuff like that, but we don't want some military heads running things. Definitely not. We just care about our neighbors. Yeah, well, that's the whole. That's the whole. Um, that's the whole worry, right? That Democrats. I think that's something that Republicans worry about. I think that's something that Democrats worry about. Yep. On both sides, both sides are afraid the other side is going to end up becoming that. Like the the Democrats are constantly afraid of the. Uh, <laughs> Hold on here. My computer just went kapooey. Um, the Democrats, it seems like, are constantly afraid of the fascism yep. happening. The Republicans are afraid of <coughs> I'm not communism. Exactly sure. communism? What, what, that, their definition of communism makes no sense still. Um, but that's they're afraid of what they basically they're afraid of the Soviet Union version of communism. Yep, or Cuba. They're not afraid of uh, like like what I, I like the actual Karl Marx communism because right. I don't think that most people even know what that is. But that that's like a lack of government, really. You yeah. Know? Um, but um, yeah, they're definitely afraid of of the Soviet Union happening, in the, it being the United States Socialist Republic. <laughs> so they're afraid if the Democrats get control, we're just going to have that. Uh, and think. let me just say that most of the far left in this country want what much of the. Uh, Europe has, which is like family leave. No, yeah, and healthcare. Like, like, that's like, it. Yeah. <laughs> We're I not asking think, for a lot here. But I think that like there's a lot of people apparently that think that's a slippery slope. Like you're trading your individualism uh, as an American. It, you just have individualism. You just are out there pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, taking care of your own, taking care of yourself in a log cabin or something. I don't know. They're, you're going to trade that freedom. Um, and the freedom to have guns there, obviously, too, uh, for universal health care, like you said, you know what I mean? Or, you know, universal daycare. And like I'm going to trade. That's a trade. Then suddenly once the government gets its paws on, on you know, that sort of stuff on, on, on daycare and health care and whatever, suddenly you won't have your freedom to go live in your cabin in the woods with a gun. You know, or something. I don't know. That's just uh, uh, Ted, Ted Kaczynski's, Kaczynski's Yeah. Style. We need to uh, stop and, um, with yeah. the whole freedom talk and start talking about, again, responsibility. How about we have responsibility to our neighbors? How about we stop trying to take everything from everybody if we don't have it? No one else can have it either. It's like toddlers, man. You have a toy. I want that toy. Once I get the toy, you can't have the toy anymore. Well, it's like, really? But that's the way we have this conversation, though realize that maybe we don't need to be afraid like republicans don't need to be afraid of democrats doing that of turning into the cccp and then uh the the maybe maybe democrats should stop being i don't know maybe maybe trump isn't a threat i don't know i mean boy he sure seems like he's a threat doesn't he but i mean maybe maybe the threat's overblown you know i mean maybe i'm my fears of fascism are overblown and blown up through the media uh, out of proportion magnified maybe i don't really know maybe maybe i need to get my head head screwed on straight and stop freaking out so much mm -hmm. uh, but man it does seem bad when you're trying to limit people who can vote you know limit where they can vote limit all those things gosh that is something that we never have done i don't think we? i don't think we Who's we? Democrats. I don't think Democrats have done that. You don't think Democrats have done that? I, 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 I would imagine have that they I'm history sure major? they probably have <laughs> at some point in history. I don't think I don't think that you can say that at all. Actually, I, I'm sure in the 1800s, I'm sure if you tried to go to the polls, you could get the shit kicked out of you if you were the wrong party. And also, in many cases, you could vote over and over and over. So I mean, if you go back to like the 1860s or something. You know, it was the Wild West, man. Like, literally. It wasn't just, quote, unquote, the Wild West. It was the Wild West. The actual Wild yeah, West, yeah, right, and, and yeah. Like, man, there was no rules, man. Like, like, it was nuts. I mean, watch Gangs in New York, dude. Like, that's, I mean, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, like, it was totally all over the place. I mean, those were Republicans in many of those cases, and not just Democrats, but Democrats and Republicans. 
you go you, if you go back in time far enough, I mean, it's it's all bets are off there. So I don't think you can blanket say that. But um, I was thinking more recent history. Well, I guess I don't know. I, even then, I don't know if you could really say that. But I, I think you need. I think that like one side, you can't throw stones like that. You can't say like, oh, one side's just guilty of doing this, and the other side's just completely innocent. I think like, the Democrats true, probably yeah. were uh, also guilty of gerrymandering in their favor as well. That would be sort of like I just, I just, re- they're worse. It's arguably worse yeah, in yeah. blue states. I can Far see that. I like can Republicans see that. have no chance in like California and New York. Like nothing. There's no way. Like the Democrats have permanent supermajorities mm-hmm. in those places. Yep. It is, and it would be on the odds of a Republican ever getting in are just unbelievably low. And if you go out into the, you know, upstate New York, and if you go out into the, I don't know, interior of California, away from the coast, you know, the hinterland, you're going to find a lot of Republicans. You know, you're going to find a lot, and they do not feel, I'm sure, represented at all. So um, they do not feel like their needs are being met at all. They probably feel like they don't get probably much response from their government, you know. And that does nothing but alienate people, I feel. So, um, oh, oh, man. Do do you have anything else you want to talk about today? Um, I just wanted to, uh, well, we were talking about Trump. Um, Yeah. uh, The GOP had a meeting, their winter meeting, and um, what is this? The AP Newswire uh, has an article says uh, the title is Trump's GOP party further tightens tie to former president um, in Salt Lake City Utah is where they have their meeting and um, to sum it up the article is telling you that large portions of the committee members are pro Trump they were uh, supporting Trump ideas and sh- basically shouting down other uh, uh um, Republicans uh, that are trying to go middle of the road, I would say, for like traditional Republicans. Um, and then right around the same time, Mike Pence, who was not there, came out with a rebuttal saying that, you know, Trump was wrong when he thought that I could change the election somehow. And that, of course, got more ear from the uh uh, Trump Republican Party. Anyways, it looks like that there's going to be overwhelming support. It also looks like Trump has put friends in positions in the GOP National Committee. Um, that's scary. That's scary, yep. yeah. Because not just for a like Democrat person. I mean, it is not fair to it should be, it should be scary middle of the road Republicans either. Yeah, moderates. That's, that's what I'd say. Like, if I was a Republican, I would be very upset i think by trump sort of loading up the party yeah with like his the deck. little cronies mm-hmm. so he can just automatically get in next election cycle right. automatically get blow, blow through the primary process anyway well i mean we'll see i don't know man like he i, I just think that like they don't that's a mistake i feel like being the party of trump might be a mistake he already lost to to the most boring person on the planet. <laughs> so I mean, like he already. I mean, I don't. I don't I'm not sure if I'm the first person to have made that joke, no. actually. But but like um, he did, though. You know what I mean? Like I don't know that he really has a shot in a general election you know, at this point. Not in any legitimate sort of fashion. Correct. Yeah. Not numerically, anyway. If he would win, it would be completely in a messed up way. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Uh, but maybe maybe that's what people are betting. His supporters are betting on. Um, I don't know. <sighs> I, I, I I anyway. If I was a mainstream Republican, I would just be terrified. I mean, the problem is, is I probably wouldn't go to the Democrats though, because I wouldn't see the Democrats' hand really be out in friendship. I would see the Democrats kind of being dicks yeah. about it, and um, you know, like everybody's worried about like. Like, like, yeah, yeah, we were watching Bill Maher. You know, he's all, Bill Maher is all obsessed with cancel culture and shit. But I mean, but that's the part that drives Republicans, any potential middle of the road Republicans from going to the Democrats when they see somebody get quote unquote canceled, you know, uh, for dressing like an Indian or whatever, which isn't cool. I'm not, it is I'm definitely not wrong. that at all. We but are saying see, that's when they wrong. See, when they see somebody just, they get fired, you know, from their job. For like, saying something in 1981. Yeah, for, 
No, no, <laughs> not from that. For like, I'm talking specifically about the woman who the math teacher yeah, who yeah, just yeah, got yeah. fired, and um, uh, that's or you know that whatever situation I guess. But that's that's that drives them away, man. Like we gotta not do that. I feel like we gotta educate and forgive. Maybe forgiveness yep. is. Forgiveness is key, you know. Forgiveness can happen if the person doesn't yeah. repeat it. Yeah, I, I just think forgiveness is more. I listened to a whole big long podcast about that the, a couple weeks ago, and forgiveness actually, I think, much of the time too, is also just a, just as much about the person doing the forgiving as it is about the person getting the forgiveness. And you know, maybe the Democrats have to learn how to forgive. Yeah, and, maybe we do. And, and that might make Democrats feel better uh, and, and more confident about things. I think part of this ang- anger, too, mm-hmm. um, the whole political correctness from the Clinton era is, I think, I know, right? some of the seed of the anger of the of the Republican Party. Because I've heard old Republican, yeah, the Republican Party is gripe seems to about be that focused a lot more on identity that, poli- or not identity politics. I guess, like, I guess, what do I want to say? Yeah, maybe that's really what it is. Yeah, um, like the like the Republican Party Party Party. <laughs> yes, the Republican Party. <laughs> they rebe- uh, uh, the, <laughs> it's the Farty Fartarians. It's the. Uh, uh, they, uh, uh, okay, we've been going for like forty minutes. Uh, you gotta uh, okay, trying to stay uh, stay <laughs> on task here. Um, but it does seem like they're they're like really focused on single issues, really really focused also on identity, uh, 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 like who is a real American and who is not mm-hmm. a real American. You know things like that, like who what is, what what is like if your origin. Isn't like I don't know, like Anglo Saxon or something. You're not a real American. Is that this um, comes back to Native insane. people, um, Native people and Native land? Everyone's trying to say who was here, who was here, who wasn't here to prove the legitimacy of them being here now. Mm-hmm. And I think it's time for a little break, and then maybe we can come back and talk about that more. Sure thing. And we are back. I think Ben was trying to point out something about uh, Anglo-Saxons and Trump. Com- <laughs> oh, yeah. I just I think Trump said something about Anglo-Saxons. Uh, didn't he at some point during his campaign, like in 2016 or something like that? Like, oh, my God, that's so white supremacist-y. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you. the word the word uh, Anglo-Saxon. I mean, if you're talking about it in a historical context, but in the United States, uh, white supremacist groups uh, from the KKK to I don't even know Nazis, whatever, they always like to use Anglo-Saxon is like their go-to. That's our tribe, basically. So it has a really, really lo- it's a loaded term mm-hmm. in the United States. Really bad. It's it's not just referring to people in the British Isles or whatever, the 700s, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's not, it's not just that. Um, yeah. So it's a loaded term here very much. So it's basically exemplifying like pure whiteness. And then um, we we're just, we we're like on this kick. I'm, we're watching this new show called the Gilded Age, which is amazing. Uh, it was done by the, uh, I think it's like Julian Fellows is his name. Uh, the same guy who created Downton Abbey, uh, which is amazing. And um, as well, um, it's just two episodes in. It just the show just started, uh, but um, it is painfully obvious that the new, it's all about the New York elite in the eighteen eighties, uh, like eighteen eighty two or so. Um, and in, it is pa- painfully, painfully, painfully obvious that they were very extremely exclusionary, exclusionary. Um, like like the United States doesn't have any sort of aristocracy. So it's almost like they use the social scene um, of New York uh, at that time, the richest people in the country. And at that time, they would have been the richest people in the world. Um, they use New York City social scene as their version of aristocratic games. Uh, really, it's pretty crazy. You're either like in or out, you, you know, like you're in new money or old money. And um, I don't know, we were just talking about Donald Trump. And he actually comes from that world largely, but his parents, I think, is that was German or something. Right? Yeah, I think the last like name was Drumpf. And yeah, it's yeah, German, it was like German. German it was like Drumpf. Um, but uh, it, uh, that anyway, and they changed it to Trump, right, or something. But uh, like they, they were millionaires, but they definitely would have not been included 
in that elite New York social scene at all in the early 20th century, I'm sure. Um, whenever the, whenever they their family came over as Germans, you know, they, they would have been completely outsiders. Um, and uh, I, I think that's just interesting. Um, uh, and they would have not been considered Anglo-Saxon enough or whatever, or not actually that. I mean, heck, for to be an elite in the New York social scene, you'd have to be like, what? Um, what what's somebody from the Netherlands called? Because uh, it was originally New Amsterdam. So if you really trace your roots, trace your roots back, it'd, it'd even be before the British, you know, and be, a, 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 I want to say Dutch, you know, really. Um, um, anyway, but that's, so that's really, really interesting. Um, and I kind of wonder if Donald Trump sometimes has a massive chip on his shoulder about that because he never really is one of that club, no matter how much money he has. Like, he'll never really be part of that scene but anyway um I mean, even though he is he he's made himself out to be like the center of that scene though you know at the yeah. same time and that's like his whole shtick but it's like he's full of shit really though like he, yep. yeah so um yeah totally full of shit anyway kind of feel bad for him if he's carrying that around all the time i don't know mm, poor donald trump never can be seen as the elite that he that he is that he wants to be <laughs> i think that goes back no, to his I dad that i think that's a <laughs> generational thing i think his dad had that chip and he gave it to his son yeah i know that's what i'm saying like that's like donald trump just was a millionaire playboy mm-hmm. like his dad would have been the one that actually yeah had to deal with pulled the, quote unquote pulled himself up by the bootstraps, bootstraps. <laughs> right bootstraps, yeah. <laughs> well whereas donald is uh the i'm sure he claims he'll pull himself up by his bootstraps or something yeah. like that yeah right up his own ass but mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> oh. did i say that oh. um no anyway. has anybody ever tried to actually do that stand up and try to pull yourself up by the it's bootstraps a, i know it's a joke <laughs> it's, it actually is technically it's like impossible yeah to bootstrap. That's why it's a joke. You mm-hmm. can't. You can't. Right. I can't remember. We stand somebody, on the shoulders of our parents. It seems like something Mark Twain would have coined. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like it, like it was meant to be a joke. And then like somebody took it seriously somewhere along the line. And like now it's like, oh, yeah, just pull yourself up by your boot. But like, no, it was meant to be just something you never could do. You know, the people who claim to have done that just inherited their money a lot. Yeah, it seems so like, like a, a joke of the upper class would have on the poorer, cl- poorer classes like trying to work their way up. The, yeah, like a joke the they're playing dream. on yeah. yeah. Like, good luck, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You no, do it. Ha, ha, let me adjust my monocle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back over to Park Place. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And to speak about that show again, there's an interesting scene in the in the show where there's an African American woman who helps this rich family's relative get to their house, right? And then she ends up working for them. And then the Irish staff who's in the basement, who are the maids and stuff, are instantly worried and scared because they're afraid she's there for their jobs. <laughs> Which is a real thing that happened it, over and over again. Like immigrants, waves of the immigrants would first be considered the maids and 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 uh, everything, and have not so good uh, social uh, capital, and then they would be transformed into Americans <laughs> if yeah, they could. Apparently, there's a uh, there's a, a book about this called How the Irish Became American or something like that. I can't think of the name. A lot of people. This whole this whole situation with Goldberg has got a lot of discussion online going mm-hmm. lately. Yeah. Um, how like at race and ethnicity has significantly changed in America in the last uh, 150 years or so. Like or, you know, really, you know, if you go back, you know, if you go back, a, a, you know, back to that other time period, you know, in the 1880s, uh, like people are going to not see the Irish as white. Really, they're not going to see Italians as white. They're not going to see. A lot of different groups is white, um, and that that changed over time, you know, and um, and that's something that a lot of Americans I think are just really ignorant of, and I I think that that's pretty wild actually, and, and I, so I don't blame Whoopi Goldberg in that way either. Like she's just seeing race as a a binary thing in a little bit, right? Black yeah. and white, yeah. um, and you got your you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sl- sl- slave and slave owners, you know, like, right, like in our own history, the Civil War actually was a kind of pretty black and white issue, 
Civil War, it's like you have good versus evil almost. You know, like it was just like you have slavers versus non slavers. You know, like that's that's uh you can't get more clear cut than that. Most civil wars actually are far more complicated in shades of gray, it seems like, in much I mean, in ways. I mean, like you know, if you look at like, the English Civil War, like that's boring in a way. I mean not boring, but like super complex anyway. It's not like it was just like a line and then one one side came up to the line and fought the other side. And then, like, the one side won at the end of the day, and slavery was abolished. You know, like, that's so... Man, America has, like, some of the... That is, like, some clean, clear... Not clean, but clear history, I guess, like that is, compared to most countries. Think of, like, Ireland, you know, the Troubles. Like, they're kind of, like, almost civil war that happened for... Them. It's just so complicated. Don't even want to wade into that. You know, you didn't, sometimes you're, like, having... You need hours and hours to explain it all, right? And, um... I yeah. think America is a, the sins of the father, so to speak. I think that America is reaping the sins of the British Isles. I think the people that came here well, were, were looking for riches. And yeah. all of our fights back to the beginning of this country has come down to property. That's like property of people, property of property, the land itself, and then also property how can we make lots of money really quickly so we can be like the aristocrats? You have to have a cheap or free labor supply, right? In order to just get rich, and then so how do you get rich? You have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and and you would have to be the landed gentry. So we're going to dis deland all the Indians, and if they won't move, we will kill them, and yes, then we will take I, their land and make riches off of it. So well, we don't have to we'll be have peasants slaves, anymore. Slaves do all the work. Yeah, too, we'll have time. slaves to do all the work. Yep. Yeah, for free. And then I feel like this, you're right. The situation hasn't changed even into the Industrial Revolution. I mean, they figured out that slavery, almost like slavery, was just bad for business mm -hmm. uh, from a PR standpoint, I think, sometimes, uh, which is very, very cynical. I mean, obviously, it was horribly, morally abhorrent, but I feel like the powers that be also were like, oh, people feel that's morally abhorrent. We better not do it anymore, <laughs> you know, because or if so, we do it, so we'll, so do it quietly. Yeah, we'll just uh, pay people a little, yeah. uh, and then um, and then make them pay for their own room board and shit. So like, I feel like that's what Jeff Bezos does now, like a little bit. Like the billionaires are still just obsessed with extracting as much wealth as possible out of the population and having the cheapest possible labor, you know. And pretty soon they're just gonna they're gonna get rid of all labor and they'll just have robots do everything. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, yep. like that's. That's the way it's headed. Yeah. You know, right? Like that they don't need they're not gonna need people to 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 sort boxes in an Amazon factory when they can have it automated. You right. know, like that's that's <laughs> uh you know, that's that's something that's that's I mean, one of the first things they automate as soon as they can figure out how, you know. Um but same with truckers too, right? Uh, it, this is the mirror. Money. It's all about money extraction. Right. And this is saying. the mirror yeah. we need to look into and look at ourselves hard as Americans, as a country. We need to look at ourselves and where of we came from so we don't repeat this stuff. Look, but a lot of immigrants who have come here, that's the reason for coming here is to get rich. They came here. That's the American dream, right? Right. But you need to so admit like that and not pretend that it didn't happen and make up mythos that, of mm -hmm. American myths. Mm -hmm. that 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 none of this actually took place and we were all happy go lucky people up here i mean that's mm -hmm. not what happened we need to I admit mean, that i think there's a place for mess i mean it's it's good to have a nation we need to learn this that's, in history class yes history class they should teach it you're right that a lot of i mean obviously the very first white people that came here right were just interested in getting rich right john wolf right yeah john wolf and then yeah, John Smith, right? Anyway, the, the, the whole Pocahontas story. They just wanted a man, just get rich, or die trying. And that was what they were here for. And that's the basis for much reality. And the other Americans that came here were just here as religious zealots, right? So it's a combination of get rich or die trying and religious zealotry. <laughs> Nothing has changed a, much, has yeah, it? Know, it feels exactly the, the same in this country. Things can change. Things don't have to be like that. A lot has changed. So, I mean, it's not it's not quite that simple. But you could say the basis, the foundation is shaky. Yeah, the foundation is shaky. But I think with all the different ways of immigrants, it's things are better, actually, in, in many ways. The immigrants that have moved here have 
brought their different different um, culture cultures and attitudes. And you have to consider like the waves of Irish immigrants, waves of German immigrants, waves of all these different refugee populations from all over the world at different times, you know. And then obviously, most recently, Latin American uh, immigrants have brought their own culture and things here, you know. And that's all created all these layers. So it's not just about getting rich. It's not just about religious zealotry. That was just like the, the, the early shaky bullshit foundation <laughs> kind of that it was on. Um, but, but all the other ways are here now. So I will sit here and say that there needs to be restitution. I think that African-American people who are descendants of the slaves should get paid. And I think that Native American tribes but, should get paid the correct amount of money from the government and we should get our land back that they uh lied and just took that wasn't even in the treaties you don't have any disagreement for me but i just think that the, the, the political reality of something like that is a lot more far-fetched well let's that's, that's, just see i i i okay sure i'm just I'm, i don't have any you're not going to get a disagreement from me at all on that but i'm just saying like i just feel like the the political reality i think that like what could be a reality is certain populations of like the like the survivors of the Tulsa race riots maybe they like specifically could actually get reparations you know what i mean because their their shit was just genuinely just stole you know um and they have evidence of this you know intergenerational so. poverty I'm saying, I know, I know. That's what I'm trying to argue is that, but you're going to have to have, to, in order to have the political, uh, in order to have the political will to do something like this, you're going to have to show, like, like they have done reparations in the United States, like with the Japanese. At the, during World War II, the Japanese were put in internment camps. I'm not sure what year it was. In the 1980s, though, the Japanese, the Japanese, uh, um, uh, uh, the descendants of that population and and, and in the 1980s there were so many, many were still alive obviously uh, they uh you know they sued and won you know i don't know how many millions or billions of dollars but they won um so they they actually got there was actually i think legislation i should i should take that back i'm probably describing this incorrectly but um but but they but so there is there is precedent is what i'm saying there is precedent that's, that's, but that was a smaller population than in the uh payout number would be much larger for slavery for slavery in general and then the I'm, question would be who pays for this would it be america or would it be uh other no, countries yeah, it was that actual, brought them here it was actual legislation in 1888 it was the silver liberties act of 1988 it gave surviving japanese americans reparations and a formal apology by president reagan uh for their incarceration during world war ii um it did pass he signed it um i mean i'm just saying like there it, there can be political will it just has to be the right time, the right, you know, Congress, the right people to do it. it, it I, I think there's precedent is all I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm just not saying it's, I'm not, I, I just think right now, I don't know. I wish, you know, it doesn't seem like they're capable of getting much through, you know. So Well, I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to move this over to uh, Indian uh, land back movement. So this goes along with kind of reparations, and this is about getting the land back. So this uh, this land back movement was officially begun in 2018 by Aaron Tailfeathers. He was a member of the Kine tribe of Blackfeet Confederacy of Canada. Now, mind you, we don't have a border between our people. Let me just make that clear. There are two different rules the United States has certain rules for Native people, and Canada has certain rules for their First Nations. Both of the sets of rules are bad, and treaties were lied on, and genocides happened, okay? People were stolen and put into residential schools in both countries. So this movement is in both countries. And... Um, I wanted to say there has been some progress in this. In 2020... Uh, in response to protests at Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore is included in the Fort Laramie Treaty area that was supposed to still belong to the Sioux. Uh, that place was never supposed to be carved into. Those are a uh, sacred mountain to the, the Sioux people. Anywho, uh, in response to protests at Mount Rushmore, the indigenous organization Indian Collective drafted the Land Back Manifesto entitled 
the reclamation of everything stolen from the original peoples. The Land Back campaign was officially launched on Indigenous People Day, People's Day in 2020. And I am quoting from an article uh, on Indians.com. It's called The Land Back Movement is Decolonizing Indigenous Land Across the Americas. And it was published January 27th, 2022. You can look that up. The article's by Albert Bender. Um, the article goes on to uh, talk about why this is important for indigenous people. There's intergenerational trauma over the land loss, and it has damaged our culture, our languages, separated our families. Um, but there's been some other lights going on here. In uh, 2019, the United Methodist Church returned ancestral lands in Upper Sandusky, Ohio, to the Wyandotte Nation of Oklahoma. That is another positive thing where the, the land is going back. In 2015, the Mashpee Wampanoag reclaimed 300 acres of ancestral land after decades of efforts. Um, and then that was overturned by Trump and then reinstated by Biden. Um, in 2020, the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations set up a roadblock on 1492 Land Back Lane to shut down a housing development on their unceded land in Ontario. Um... Here's another one. In July 2020, the Esalen tribe purchased 12,000 acre ranch near Big Sur, California as part of a multi-million dollar deal. Some tribes who have casino funds or uh, mining funds have been taking those funds and trying to buy back the land, which is like a punch in the gut to native people when the land was stolen in the first place to have to turn around and buy that land back is really a slap in the face. But they are doing it to try and build a land base for their people so they can have uh, housing and community buildings and uh, reclam reclamation of culture and traditions. Um, also, I think I want to be clear, too, about like uh, a myth that uh, is perpetuated about um, Indians, I think. Because uh, I, I remember hearing this... Uh, ah, I don't want to give... Okay, I, guess, I don't want to give like, too many details, uh, but... Um, I remember hearing this from uh, a, a local uh, uh, at one of the places I worked, and um, they they basically they would always go to the casino, right, in uh, Mount Pleasant or not even Mount Pleasant. I'm sorry, I think it was like further away, maybe Gun Lake or somewhere. I don't know. One of the one of the casinos, anyway. They'd ride a bus, and like every like a lot of older people around here, they're just like, you know, um, oh, I ride a bus to go to the casino, and blah blah blah. Those Indians are gonna scalp me, ha ha ha. I don't like that, you know, these similar shit, right? But um, it's not not cool at all. But that's uh, they. Anyway, they seem to be under the impression. I asked them one day because they knew a lot about like a local area, like where are the Indian, you know, what like what tribes might have lived around here? Because I was just interested in like local history, and they just said no, there weren't any, and that you know right there is just like completely. I don't know. It's just completely nuts. As a history nerd, you know, I'm just like, what do you mean? I, I didn't even get into it because at the time I didn't even want to like have that kind of debate with that person at that, that time. But like, it's just, no, man, like, that's not true. There's Indians everywhere. They're buried everywhere. They have village sites everywhere. Yeah, and like, it's interesting they'll no, say like, that and then they'll turn around and show not, you the arrowheads they found on their property. But they, Indians they, no, weren't they were not. They were not an arrowhead person. Like that, let's just... I. Not I'm just saying I've heard all, the same thing. Not all white people are on this are on in this uh, category. So I'm not trying to not all white people who live in rural areas, but I think many white people who live in rural areas have this weird fantasy that this was just pristine wilderness. This came from like old Davy Crockett movies. I remember watching Davy Crockett uh, in the Wonderful World of Disney when I was a kid. And Daniel uh, uh, Bowie or whatever his name was, right? Um, David. I don't want to say David, David Bowie. Bowie. <laughs> so that, that's not what I'm talking about. Not that David Bowie. Totally different. Not David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. The, more like the, the the you know big knife Bowie knife guy. Uh, like so that that like they just thought like this this whole I mean not just this Kentucky Tennessee all the way Ohio Michigan these whole areas were just pristine wilderness. They, like didn't there was no one here and they just walked in and there was just gardens planted for them and. And orchards and and Garden just things of and, and and just like it's just like no man there, that covers up a horrible genocide horrible history of 
of uh, uh, of of genocide. Yes, but not just genocide. Mass removal. Mass removal campaigns. It didn't just happen to the um, Cherokee folks. Literally paying people to hunt and kill. This they, was uh, the Wild you know, West. And then they for for, <laughs> for the for the late 1700s and early 1800s. This was yes. This was the West, and like took. So, and it was a horrible campaign of basically slaughter, uh, cultural genocide, real genocide, um, like everything you could think of that went on for like well over a hundred years. You know, I mean, more. I, I want to say right up into the fifties. You know, um, almost. Um, and like this, this idea from a lot of white people that just like there weren't any Indians here is just completely. It's sad, actually. It's just not even. I don't even have words. Like, especially as a history buff, like I am, I just don't even have the words to even like, like, like. What do you mean? Like that? I I don't even know where to start with that. Like, there's actual burial sites, village sites, everything everywhere around. If you look, I mean, if I you, mean, if archaeologists. M sixty six, which runs through here, M ninety one in Greenbelt mm-hmm. are old Indian trails. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Probably, I, I don't, I don't even have a clue about that. But, I definitely know yeah. that for sure. But I know they that are. there's a lot of spots <laughs> along the Flat River and stuff like yeah. that that were probably village yep. sites. And yeah, that's and, where that started. And, and those uh, comments were kind of uh, perpetuated or uh, started. Uh, you were saying, Melanie, from like, what, go ahead. Uh, they were like dime store paperback novels or like uh, graphic novels. Uh, back in the 1800s, right. that's where that was started. About this land was pure; there was nobody here. It was just perpetuated to children. Well, they're, they're, they figured out, I think, early on in in, in American history is the best way to uh, colonize. Right? Isn't to send the military out necessarily. It's just to send people out. Just just send families out to the frontiers. And they'll just take care of the colonizing for you. You know, like if the, if the government wanted to take over an area, right, they, you know, just settle it, you know, and then they tell people they own the land and they will die for that land, right? They will do anything necessary to keep, to own, to, to have that land, you know what I mean? Especially Europeans who had a very, um, I want to say like a kind of narrow view of what land could be, but I mean they, they were coming from a place where land ownership was almost impossible for anybody uh, if you were outside the aristocracy. So I mean if you were like transported on a ship from England to here, you know, and like you, you would get here and you'd be in a big city here or something like that, and then you were told you could get a free forty acres or whatever the hell, you know what I mean? Hell, man, you are gonna take that. Because, like, in Ireland or England or whatever, there was no chance in a million years you were going to be able to own that kind of property there. Everything was owned and possessed by the, by the you know, elites, by the aristocracy, and by the richer merchant classes. You know, like, there's just no way a regular person uh, without some kind of inheritance was going to be able to get anything like that. Um, <laughs> in fact, I think much of you are probably... Probably is still similar to that. You know what I mean? In reality, I mean outside cities and stuff like that, and much of Europe, right? It's 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 mainly owned by probably corporations and wealthy people. You know, um, so th- this was just like to them, and they they would die for it. They would kill for it. I mean, in a way, you can't. I you can't even almost like blame the average Joe. You know, so to speak. You know, I mean, you, you can blame them, but I'm saying like, you, you if you see it, look at it from their perspective, you just kind of I almost pity them. You know what I mean? Because like they're they're doing the killing for the for the for the state. You know, because the state doesn't need to use its own resources now. The state could just send you out there and you'll kill everybody for them. You know, get, a, get clear the land and, and divide make and conquer. Divide and conquer. That's what happened. You mean like uh, divide and conquer happened mean? between tribes too? Well, we'll ally with the British, and you'll ally with the French, and then you'll ally with the Americans, and we'll all fight each other and kill each other off for everybody else. And then whichever uh, foreign power rises to the top takes over. Mm-hmm. That's a strategy as well, and making sure the division between the settler class and the Native American people was wide making sure the division was wide it's still wide today right it's it's quite wide yeah and then the the most racist people the most racist white people right are the people that live uh closest proximity to reservations right a lot of the time most racist towards towards indians right the ones that realized were there but you know in the schools we i i was i helped uh in the elementary schools in mount pleasant which literally 
That whole town was on the reservation, the original reservation boundaries. And the children did not, A, realize Indians still existed. They thought we were all dead. We didn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And B, couldn't understand that we lived in houses and drove cars and were modern people. And that us that had visited the school were real natives. (laughs) <laughs> it was very uh, interesting because they were so... But what ages are you talking this about? This was kindergarten, first grade. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, you know, I mean, like, that's... that's I've heard the same thing from adults. They're thinking of, like... They're, but their only experiences maybe would have been, like, Pocahontas, the movie, the cartoon. Or the two lines from the history you book. Know, like, 1492, they landed, there were Indians, it, it, Thanksgiving, it, done. I know, not to make any excuses, but, I mean, a kindergartner is not going to have a history book. I mean, they're, they're, they just watch cartoons, you know, and... So, I mean, like, that's not, they're going to have any, I, I you know. Um, I, I will say kudos to the Mount Pleasant School District that brought the to the tribal people in to teach about that. That Thank you very much. Miigwech. Yeah, right. That's something that they do that a lot of school districts probably don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is great. Um, and maybe most more school districts should. There's obviously a lot of uh, natives around the Grand Rapids area. You know what I mean? They obviously, in the Grand Rapids school system, they could be or just the general surrounding West Michigan area could be bringing in natives and saying, hey, you know, natives have existed here, yep. you know, along the, the Grand River forever, you know. And like you can bring us in in you know, more than just the month of November. Yeah. Just like you can bring African-Americans in to that's talk about African-American true. history besides the month of February. Thank you. At any time. Um, the yeah. other thing I want to say, too, about this article, just real quick, is that the land back movement is not slowing down. It's speeding up. And we are not talking about taking private people's houses from them so i want to make sure that people aren't standing up with their guns thinking indians are going to come take their house because that's not what we're after for we're looking for our original uh, boundaries to be reinstated around our reservation areas that were promised in the treaties we're looking for reclamation of lands that are currently used by the military and our national parks unused quote-unquote unused land so that's not, I don't want people thinking that uh, we're coming, we're, we're circling and coming for you. No, we're not. We're trying to get some of our land back, our land base back so we can build our communities on it and have a better stewardship of the land as well. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It does seem like the uh, nature, again, going back into the uh, history of the United States, uh, like our nature of, of our relationship with the land has been primarily ex- exploitive. Um, not entirely, uh, you know, national parks are the best thing about this country. And that is amazing. You know, um, they're like, they're like our, our temples, right? I, I feel like for all Americans, you know, they're, and that's, that's the key. <laughs> they're not just for rich Americans. They're like for everybody. Right. And, and that, that's, that's amazing. But I mean, primarily the, the, right, the relationship with the land is exploitive, I think. Uh, uh, and that's something that'd be. Kind of nice to move past that <laughs> someday. It doesn't have to be completely exploitive. Not every little tree has to be cut down. We can use you know? the land and yeah, make maybe. sure that it's yeah. there for the next seven generations. Yeah, yeah. Think we can like drink that. the yeah. water and make sure we pee it out in the same place and it's there for the next I mean, seven generations. We need, we, need some, we need natural resources like wood and we need crops, obviously, to live. Mm-hmm. You know, to have, But, I mean, we don't have to necessarily, just because it's there... Right? Doesn't mean it has to be just completely annihilated. Consumed. <laughs> you know, like, we need to stop looking so. at the natural world as something we can consume because it's finite mm-hmm. and precious. And we need to look at it like our world is a diamond, a beautiful, beautiful diamond. And we need to make sure or that it's, it stays beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or a marble, a really cool one. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's it for me today. Yeah, I man, just we, wanted I, to this is our longest podcast. give you yeah, something oh to think God. about. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm, I'm surprised. Boy, we could really rant. We can. <laughs> it's all pen up for me and Donald. Yeah, I know, pen up. <laughs> and a lot, a lot pen up. Oh, that, another thing, too. I'm going to change my outro. Um, normally, I say bon appetit, motherfucker. Uh, Melanie pointed out to me uh, here a while ago that that is completely incorrect. Um, that if you're going to say Bama P, uh, that the, the motherfucker does not make any damn bit of sense. Because in Ojibwe yeah. language, we don't have swear words, first of all. And so pairing um, 
the word we use for see you later basically with a swear word doesn't make sense in either language and baba p directly means afterwards when so if you say it like if i translate it and say the whole thing in english it's afterwards when motherfucker which doesn't make any sense either so i told him we should say baba p gawabaman which means i will see you again because we have no goodbye so I think we're just going to probably go ahead and say that. I'll let you, uh, yeah, go ahead and say it one more time for me. Bama Pika Wobbleman. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And Bama Pika Wobbleman. Wobbleman. <laughs> <laughs>